Hey everybody, I'm super excited today to walk you through all the great features of Zoom. So first we're going to go through the entire control panel and then I'm going to show you how to share three different types of things using the share feature. So I'm going to walk you through the whiteboard, I'm going to walk you through how to share websites, and then I'm also going to walk you through how to share a PDF, and actually, actually an interactive PDF that I created myself. So right away we have just the basics, the mute. When you mute, you will get a notification. Um, if you want to stop video, you can do that by doing um, clicking on the button. You just see the name. Security is a new update to Zoom, and I also want to make clear that this is my fourth year using Zoom for speech therapy. And this is when everything broke about Zoom security issues. I've never had that problem. I've never had one problem with Zoom for their security ever in four years. So um, with these new features, it's even more secure. So I can lock the meeting so that nobody else can come in. Um, I can enable a waiting room. So that's those are two things that I will do once participants join. Um, I don't need to have my students ever share their screen. At the school building, the application that they have on the computer from what I know is extremely bare bones. It's just uh, getting Zoom on there and connecting it to the internet. So there's really nothing for them to share with me. And I it just defaults to letting people rename themselves. And sure, that's fine. Um, it's something that I don't typically need to, to do with students because everything just pretty much launches through one click and there's no need to modify settings. As you can see with the participants button um, just shows it pops up all the people that are here and since there's only me um, it's one if there were multiple it would be more than one. Share screen I'm going to go into that in a second. Record I don't use at all like I said before. Reactions is new. It's cool because if a student does something good you can give them a thumbs up or you can give them a round of applause. And I really like that. I really hope they develop that with more emojis for kids. Um, I think it would really increase engagement. Okay, so I'm gonna go into sharing your screen. When you click on this, you get a still of my desktop. So you're looking at a still of your full desktop. You could share your entire desktop. I never ever click on that. So there's no need for my students to see my full desktop. I'm going to do the whiteboard now so I can share with you some of the cool features of the whiteboard. All right, so um, here's the whiteboard. Uh, I'm just going to go through the whole lineup. Uh, well, I'll tell you first what I like to do. So I personally will start with always choosing a thick line. I think the thin line can be hard to see. If I'm working on a word, um, I'm going to put it right here. So I'm going to put um, I always like to hand draw my words and letters. There is a text tool that I'll show you. Okay, so let's pretend we're working on the word casa. So let's say I want to um, go ahead and take away one. Um, I can select it and move it around. Or if, for example, we started doing this word and I'm thinking, oh, I wanna put more words in a row. You can move it with the select tool. And if you don't like what you just did, you can do undo. Okay, great. Text tool is next. Um, right now it's defaulting to, I was playing around the, with the settings. It's defaulting to very large, bold, and italic. Okay. Um, that's about as big as it gets on the text tool. And it's really great. I can e easily un-italic it and unbold it. And I could make it smaller, but I do like things nice and large. My, my students are elementary age, so it's really important for them to, to see it and read. Next tool we have here is the draw tool. I already showed you the thin line, um, the thick line you see. I don't use, I don't use the diamond. I don't, I don't use this line tool pretty much ever. Uh, I do use the arrows. So if I wanted that student to say that one again, I would actually thicken the line and it doesn't do it retroactively. So um, 
you you set the line length. Anything that you had previously written won't like get bigger. You have to um, do it again. So I'm I'm gonna make it nice and clear. Work on this sound again. Um, I can then go back and use the select tool, move it over, say, how about this one now? Okay, as you can see, I can use the eraser to just get rid of all that stuff. Let's say the student did a really great job and I'll be like, yes, yay, I could do some, you said that three times, I'm super proud of you. And depending on your student and how they take criticism, you could say, try that again. I heard a couple sounds I didn't like there or whatever you're gonna say, that didn't sound very positive, but you know what I mean. Um, give them a gold star, woohoo, yeah! And give them some hearts, woo, you can, you can do whatever you want. Kids really like um, that kind of feedback. I'm going to go ahead and just do a big erase of all of that. Um, let's say I want to go ahead and spotlight. Instead of maybe doing a drawing, I can be like, hey guys, please take a look at the first letter. Okay. Sometimes I leave the spotlight on and just do a whole bunch of different things, but not this time. Um, if I had done a special drawing, I wanted to you know, be the one to point it out. I don't use the arrow, so I never do that. Oops, undo, undo, undo. And I'm gonna erase that because I don't need that. So there's the eraser tool. Under format, you can choose um, a whole bunch of different colors, line thickness, and it defaults to whatever you, so if you were like, oh, I wanna go back to like a, like a different thickness, you can just go and change that. Undo and redo are um, obviously self-explanatory and clear. I like how you can get the option of clearing all the drawings. Um, I do that all the time. I could clear just my drawings. If I gave control to my students and I didn't like what they did, I just clear theirs. They don't necessarily like that very much. If you were working with students, right here would be where you would give the option to control. You won't get that option. I've had people join my meeting by phone or iPad. You won't get that option to share the, the screen with them for them to take over control. They will see it, but they won't be able to take over control um, through those mediums. Okay, and one thing I like to do, um, note that you can pause the share. So while you maybe decide, have them practice that word while you are quickly setting up for the next word. I, I, what I like to do is maybe potentially change the color so that it pops. You can see I have a super thick line and that one's really, really clear. I like that too. So then when I say, okay, I'm gonna resume the share, the other word is gone, the new word have just popped up. So I like to pause the share sometimes too. Uh, and I don't know if I went over saving the picture. If I, I'm like, oh, I really like, it'll show me that I saved it. I won't even, I won't even have to name it or anything, quickly saves it which is really nice. That's the whiteboard. Let's go straight to a new share. I'm gonna go over a couple internet resources that I really like. Um, let's start out with this resource put together by a speech pathologist. It's called Best Coast Speech. Um, it's really cool. I, it's, it's really cool by the way, so you should consider um, you get to have online Arctic content. So it's really great. I am a member and signed up. This is where you can search and you have to be a member. And unfortunately, they don't have Spanish at the moment. They're working on it. So let's say I'm going to work on, um, let's see, I'm going to try to, so you can see the whole thing come up here. Let's say I'm going to try to work on um, S at the beginning of a word. So I'll just say, you know, I'm just going to say anything. And so it's going to pull up. First, it defaults to the first one that it has, but you can look at. Let's say I really like center. I'm going to save it. And I could say um, S. S sounds. If I had, I have one folder called students, I wanted to save that, I would say, yes, I wanna save that, submit. And you can add and select a bunch new, of new images that you would really like to, um, to put together. Let's just say I X out without going to a new thing. 
it will just say screen sharing has stopped. So let's go back. I want to show you one more internet resource. And it's this one website called Time for Kids. So everybody's making things free right now. So this would be a time to jump in here. I really like this website. They have this box here. I definitely would join if I were you. I did this one for a whole bunch of lessons with all different ages of students. So I can hit new share and it'll pop up another thing that I've got open on my desktop. So I'm going to say yes, share. So I should also note that you can see I've got two um, two things layered over each other, but you can see the green box is around this one. That is what students see. Even if you have multiple things like on your desktop, they will only see what you share. Okay, so this is a no print that I created, which means that I made it so that when you click on certain uh, portions of the screen, it will automatically advance to the next slide. This is all about figurative language. And I set it up so that you can go one from one slide to the next. The first part is metaphor. And so you can explain this to students and then you can click on the arrow to advance. And it'll just take you immediately to the next page. So you could say, what does this mean? and give the students some options. So many students struggle with figurative language. I thought this would be kind of fun. Um, and so let's say it, it only works if you click the right answer. Okay, so I am a walking dictionary. So let's say if, you, if a student tries to click the wrong answer, it doesn't do anything. But if the student clicks the right answer, it says you are right and it displays the right answer again. Now, if I want to annotate on this PDF, I can. Um, if I want to be like, hey guys, let's look a little closer at this. Or those same tools that are on the whiteboard. Good job, yay, I'm gonna give you some stars. You can annotate here. And you can also annotate on any web page. So if you are interested in purchasing this PDF, um, I will leave a link in the profile for my figurative language no print. It's very large. You can see it's 230 pages. So it goes on and on and it gives you a lot of content. So I'm going to stop the share and just quickly say thank you to you for watching this. Um, if you want to throw me a like or subscribe, that would be awesome. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment below. I love Zoom. I'm going to go through a couple more things to do with Zoom in my next videos. I'm going to talk about how I uh, pair my iPad with my computer to share content, share content from my iPad to my computer. I'm also going to do a video about boom cards, which are another way to interact with students over the computer during speech therapy. But I will get into those later. You'll have to wait for that. And I hope you're well. I hope you're feeling good right now. It's kind of a stressful time. You're just doing the best you can, and I'm sure you're doing a really great job. So I will catch you next time. Take care, stay safe, and um, have a great day.